Hello, my name is Paul Oakes from the Equality Commission. I hope to spend the next 10 minutes providing an overview of the Section 75 duties and how they should be applied even in the context of COVID-19 policies. The webinar is aimed at all of those in public authorities with responsibility for policy development and review and for those making important decisions in these challenging times. So to recap in relation to Section 75, public authorities are required to pay due regard and regard to the need or desirability of promoting equality of opportunity and good relations to specific equality groups. These duties are statutory duties. They are ongoing or continuing duties. They must be taken into account in an appropriate way when decisions are being taken and policy being made. Each public authority has its own equality scheme, which lays out its commitments and the practical ways in which it will comply with the Section 75 duties. But in this context, the Equality Commission recognises that COVID-19 related policies may need to be developed quickly and they may need to be implemented quickly and relate to very challenging decisions. But it is important to remember that these policies can have an impact and sometimes an adverse impact on certain of the Section 75 groups, perhaps on occasion compounding existing inequalities. So it is important to remember and to take this into account as a policymaker but also to be cognizant of the fact that the Section 75 duties continue to provide a mechanism to identify and address adverse impact, and that's called mitigation. So public authorities need to be cognizant of the fact that the statutory duties continue to apply. The Commission has no power to suspend them or revoke them, and they remain important duties. So what can public authorities do to ensure that they comply with their duties? Well, firstly, they can continue to try and focus on the duties as far as practicable and to demonstrate this. Secondly, and very importantly, they need to be cognizant of their equality scheme commitment to screen all policies and to screen policies at the project initiation stage, not at the end of the implementation stage. Screening remains as important and must be considered by public authorities. If screening cannot be completed before the policy is implemented, then public authorities need to ensure that they have ongoing monitoring systems in place so that they are able to screen the policy and assess its impact through the implementation stage with a view to identifying and addressing any adverse impacts through mitigation. Finally, public authorities should be able to demonstrate how they have complied with their duties in a practical way through maintaining written records. Monitoring the implementation of any policy and identifying mitigation measures are important in terms of policies being developed at any time, but they are particularly important at the current time where policies are being implemented quickly and developed very quickly and where they are being implemented on occasion prior to screening being completed and equality impacts being identified. I would therefore like to spend a moment looking at monitoring and mitigation in particular. Monitoring remains very important because it allows public authorities to assess the ongoing impact of a policy and to address adverse impact and as a result of that and consequentially to use mitigation to minimise adverse impact or even possibly to eliminate it. And we should also remember that consultation, particularly in relation to impact assessments, remains an important part of each equality scheme. If we look at the wider policy agenda in Northern Ireland at the current time, we see significant policy developments in relation to health and social care, education, economy, employment, welfare, housing and accommodation, 
and in relation to the digitalization of public services. And when we look at some of the specific developments, there is the potential for adverse impact against some of the Section 75 groups. Let's look at education. There's the potential of homeschooling to increase the barriers for some equality groups due to an absence of suitable learning environments or a lack of internet access or a lack of access to software or hardware. We also have the loss of access to education services for children with special education needs and disabilities and those receiving language support. If you look at health, there have been significant policy developments in relation to the provision of physical and mental health care, the provision of support and equipment, including PPE, for those providing key services. So these policies clearly have a potential to create an impact and an adverse impact. And we would urge those who are making policy in this area to consider have they and how have they complied with their equality scheme commitments? Have they screened these policies? Have they addressed adverse impact? Have they put monitoring systems in place to address their Section 75 duties? In conclusion, we want to remind uh, public authorities that the Section 75 equality duties remain in place, that public authorities' commitments remain in place, that those commitments require that public authorities screen all of their policies, that they address uh, adverse impact through mitigation and they reduce adverse impacts. The Equality Commission remains open for business. If you have queries relating to Section 75, you can contact our inquiry line and you'll be able to talk to one of our staff directly or you can email us, but you can also access a significant amount of data and advice and support that we hold in relation to Section 75 on our website. So in conclusion, if you have any queries and concerns or issues relating to Section 75 where you need advice, please do not hesitate to contact the Equality Commission and we would be delighted to help you.